pin number 293. secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the Wisdom of Solomon. The souls of the righteous are in the hand, hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and their going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive a great good because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them, and like a sacrificial, sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand the truth, and the faithful will abide in him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 24, found in your order of worship. We will read the psalm in unison. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and all who dwell therein. For it is he who founded it upon the seas and made it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? And who can stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not pledged themselves to falsehood, nor sworn by what is a fraud, they shall receive a blessing from the Lord and a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, and those who seek his face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O heavenly doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, and open the doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. A reading from the Revelation of John. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth have passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of the heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. 
And I heard a loud voice from the throng saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, there is already a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked up and said, 
Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you are always with me, always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Recently, I heard a story about, um, I don't want to say a favorite actor, but an actor who I appreciate, um, partly because he doesn't look like everybody else in the world, and I'll, I will butcher his name badly, Danny Trejo. Everybody knows him, or at least knows his face in movies, because as he claims, he's been killed in movies 65 times. Which is something, which is a, which is actually a record in Hollywood. He's the one who's been killed the most. In, um, he starred in movies like Machete, and he was in Con Air, I believe, and a couple of other movies. And that's really not neither here nor there. But he lived a very colorful life, shall we say? Started, you know, robbing stores and running drugs at an early age, and ended up in prison, and actually ended up in San Quentin. And somebody was asking him as part of his story, do you regret the past? And he said, I don't regret the past because it made me what I am today. Which is great if you've lived through all of that and have come out on the other side without too many permanent scars. And yet there is a lot of truth to that if we remember that what happens in our past is not is not something which will bind us to the world of the past. We can always change. We can always see something in a new light. We can take the past events through the lens that we live with in this present time and move to the future. And that's what he had done with his life. He had taken this opportunity to cast off the bounds the bonds that he had had, and to make the best of it. And so he said, no, there's really nothing that I, I wish I hadn't done it, but I don't regret that it had happened because it makes me who I am today. And I think there's something which rings true to us because the story of our life that we are and that we live has to include both our past because that's what made us what we are in the present. And it helps focus us on where we will head in the future. Today being All Saints Sunday, we will see some fairly standard actions in most Episcopal churches today. Across our denomination, at least in the Episcopal church, we will, there will be remembrances those, of those who are no longer with us the reminder of the saints among us who have been among us and who continue to be among us. Honestly, I, I think it's proper to remember those recently passed 
And in fact, sometimes we remember those who are long past, but that's less important to us liturgically. Today is a day where we say goodbye in a way to members of our parish, those who have graced this community with their reflection of God's present in the here and in the now. But today is a day which is more important than simply looking at the loss of the past. We are invited or maybe reminded to remember the more essential parts of the lives of the saints present. We are encouraged to remember our diverse fellowship in the vibrant community of this body of believers. And our colic today uses those terms of fellowship and communion. And I'd like to take a little look at what that means. What does it mean to say that we have fellowship? And it's not simply the eating of food in the parish hall, because if that was the case, we wouldn't have had fellowship for almost two years. Fellowship is companionship. It's a friendly association that has a shared experience. Not unlike the word communion. It's the act of sharing in common. Not simply at the table, but it's that intimate relationship with a deep understanding of the other, even, or probably more importantly, when the other is different than we are. Today, All Saints Sunday, is a day to remember that God is bigger and more effective than we can imagine, and that it is our differences that make us instrumental for God's work in the world, and that the end must come, but the end we know is not the final end. But we often need others to help us see God in the struggle of the now, which leads me a little bit to the reading from John of Patmos, the revelation to John. John in his reading is relating to the people in his world, the new reality which comes when God's reign on earth is realized. John is describing something which is a new creation, not simply a retread of what we already have, but something which is wholly new and wholly life-changing. The old is not what carries forward from today. The new world that we realize is amongst us is what survives. The new is the thing which is what buoys us and carries us to tomorrow and the day after and the day after. The promise of the newness of life that comes each and every day. Part of John's story is, in fact, the removal of the boundaries or the bindings, the things which keep us tied to our past. In this case, it was the sea was the boundary in creation. It separated earth from earth. The sea in the world of the Jews and the first century Christians was something which was unconquerable. And for the most part, it's still unconquerable. The sea is mysterious. How does it get to where it is and how do things move? We know sort of, but not really. It is, in fact, an integral part of God's creation, but more important to us than simply a boundary between us and them. The final state that we look forward to is the state where God is dwelling with us. God becomes accessible. God becomes relatable because God is found right here with us. And what was our nature in sin will be no more because the sin that we know is removed. The relationships that we have with God and with others have been restored to their natural state. John reminds us that what we were in our past is no more, and what lies ahead every day is new. We are assured this because of our relationship with God and God's promises. And we hear it today in John's reading, and that should be something which gives us hope. 
Because God says, I am beginning and end. I am Alpha and Omega. That assurance to us is nothing happens or will happen in the absence of God's care and presence. As I was doing some studying for this week, and I have to admit that it was a little, I had approached this with trepidation because I find myself looking for the story I want to tell as opposed to the story that Scripture wants me to tell. I had a reflection question that came up this week, and it was disturbing to me, not because it isn't important, but because I'm starting to feel like I'm a broken record. The question that was asked was, how does our story end? We know at least functionally the answer to that story, at least as individuals. We all die. As far as we know, nobody gets out alive with the possible exception of Elijah. But we have been assured that God's plan for us and our community and those who we are in fellowship with will not be defeated as a place where we are reminded that God is always present, the answer, though, to our life and the questions that we have is complex. The answer to the question of how does our story end? We need to remember that God never abandons those who love God, you and me and all of us in this room and all of those who we have been connected to in our past. God sends people into our body, into the body of the faithful, to help them renew their spirit, to remind them that God is present always, and that the simple way to find God's presence is to get out of the way and to look for it. We find God most easily when we stop being the one who is important and looking for God. God, in fact, puts us together from different places, and I'm very aware of that, being one who is not technically from here, to help us reweave the body present into something with a shared experience and with a shared focus. God is creating us new. He's knitting us one with another to create this interwoven fabric, which is rich and warm and comforting. And it helps us refocus ourselves not on what we don't have or what was past into what we do have and how we share that today. Not yesterday, not tomorrow, but today. So how are we, in fact, looking for people or looking to God to help us find those people to be knit together with us? Well, I hope that each and every day we befriend somebody in some simple way and share God's presence, maybe not with words, but by action. Developing a relationship and a real fellowship where we can have some shared experience. And through that shared experience, we will start to witness God present in ourselves and in others. So my question is, why does God make us remember the past? Well, we were invited to remember the past, to remember the saints, not because we might forget them. No, it's not that, because none of us will forget those people who have gone before us. No, what we need to remember is that we are part of something that is bigger than now. Bigger than the fears that we have and bigger than what we feel like we're turning into. And even when we are different than we were back then, we will become something which is new and inviting and greater than the sum of everything that has gone before us. God reminds us in this community that we are part of a group with community and fellowship, which is focused on the promises made before today, that promise of God's presence with those who trust and believe and fear God. We are invited to remember the saints both before us and present because the ark of the community does not start or stop with us. 
the beginning and the end of the community is truly found in God. The promise that we are reminded of today is that God dwells right here with us, all of us, in our community, and we only need to be what we are and what we are called and equipped to be, not something different, not something that's like everybody else. We are called to be exactly what we are today. God was, God is, and God will be with us. That's the promise that God made all those centuries and millennia ago. All we gotta do is look and find God's presence right here, right now. This place is a place that God created where God will thrive, not as God, but God with humans, doing God's work in the world. Sometimes we repeat the promises made, not because we might forget them, but because they get lost in the noise of our life. God sends us to be prophets and spiritual companions and others to be prophets and spiritual companions with us and to recognize that we are part of the actual presence of God even when we have difficulty seeing it. So how does the story end? We don't know. We won't know. But if we are faithful to God, we know that the story will end in victory. The victory of God over all that we fear today and forever. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Let us recite the Nicene Creed, which is found in your order of worship, our ancient confession of faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified in a conscious high school. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are found on page 7 of the weekly bulletin. 
On this last Sunday of the liturgical year, we celebrate the feast of Christ the King as we reflect on the meaning of Jesus' reign over our hearts. Let us pray for ourselves and for the world, saying, May your reign come, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in position of power, that they may govern with wisdom and integrity, serving the needs of their people. May your reign come, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, the sign of your reign, that it may extend your welcome to the people of every race and background. May your kingdom come. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for Christians of every denomination, that together we may come to understand the royal priesthood you bestowed on us in baptism. May your dominion come. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those who, whose commitment to truth brings them into conflict with earthly powers, that they may have the courage to endure. May your rule come. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for this community of faith, that attentive to your word, we may always worship in truth, in spirit and truth. May your reign come. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Loving God, you have taught us that the power of the heart is greater than the power of wealth and money. <coughs> Hear us as we pray for the fulfillment of your reign. We ask this through Jesus our King. To him be glory and power forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Greet one another in the peace of Christ. Peace. 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 Walking out his cook, God loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming to glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, no. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy kingdom and the power of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God to the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
found in your order of worship. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us all spiritual to agree in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sinfulness of sorrow. Through Christ our own Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated for some announcements. There's nothing else. Um, our closing hymn is hymn number 288. Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.